Jason, over what period of time then have you purchased these three new MX330 machines? Uh, the first one came in uh, December uh, of 2019 and then the other two turned up uh, January this year. So why do you need an extra three machines like this? <laughs> well, God knows. I'm a mug from Matsuras, I think. We need it for increased capacity. This time of the year, we've had a great apprentice program where our apprentices are coming through now, all needing machines to work from. So we needed to give them the tools to do their job. It's a real showcase for how successful the first installation was as well, though, wasn't it? Maybe talk us through some of the advantages and benefits you found from the first MX330 then, which drove you down the road of getting another three. OK, well, I don't know whether you'll see from the video, but we're pretty short for space here at the moment. So the, the key selling point for us at the moment with the MX330 is its small footprint. It'll let me get a lot more machines in um, the space where I would be traditionally put in a MAM72. They're just so reliable. It's the reliability of the Matsura machine is just invaluable to my business. We work predominantly with Formula One. If the machines broke down, it would be a real headache for me, whereas the Matsuras don't tend to break down. When they do, they've got the service to back that up. Okay, there's two areas. The machine itself, which we know as a five-axis machine, a hand-built machine, high quality, delivers precision machining results. But then the automation for me, where have you explored and where have you found the real advantages to this? Is it maybe at the weekend where you want to run a few extra parts or you know, you've got small batches and you want to come in in the morning to them being finished? Are those the key areas? So historically the components that we do are, are, are very complex components. So we could have somebody programming them all day and then we'd walk out the door and we wouldn't be running until the day after. Whereas now we can leave the machine, leave it running, we've got the Renishaw probing, we've got the tool breakage in there, so we've got a reliable process. You opted on the, the two latest machines for a higher speed spindle as well, didn't you? What was the reason for that? Well, the high speed spindle, obviously, because we do do a lot of aluminiums and we're doing a lot of scanning, and we just need that higher speed to get the finishes and, and, and to get travel at the right speeds that we should be traveling for for aluminium and is there a big difference then uh, you know in, in the cycle times as a result of having that that additional uh, additional speed the cycle times are improved slightly but what you have got improved is the surface finish and the quality of component that's coming off the machine and, and Jason do you ever look at a, the return on investment with these machines do you ever it's obviously a success but yeah how, how, how much into the detail do you get about how quickly these are paid for and how much better it is to have those 10 pallets and how much quicker the return is with that? That's an awkward question, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. All I know is that we're doing well and uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing a, a good return for our investment currently on the new three machines that we put in. We're, 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 we're uh, looking quite buoyant. And it means really now you can keep that spindle going, doesn't it? It means you, you, your uptime on the machines is very high as a result of all the setting and the loading being done outside of the machining area. Exactly, and, and then also we've got the flexibility of moving from one machine to another machine to another machine. Um, so we're not just tied down, we've not just got one MX330 now, we've got four. So the interchangeability of pallets and whatnot. And when you look at UK industry, do you, do you see that this MX330, I mean you've got the H uh, Plus machines as well from Matsura, the, hor the horizontals, the MAMs. Do you see these though as a different animal? Do you see them selling a lot more of these because of the, like you've said, the size, the versatility, all of those factors lend themselves to general subcontract machining, don't they? Oh, they certainly do. I mean, the MAMs, uh, the, the MX330s, uh, it's just the footprint. The footprint gives me what we need. We've got 90 tools, which is enough for most, most components. The MAMs, are a different animal. The MAMs are the five axis, so five axis MAMs, not the H plus, but we've got like 240 tools and they'll get set up on more production orientated jobs now. MP Engineering, Jason, final point on your business. You're obviously doing well, as, as you've said. Where's the future for you? You talk about Formula One work. Are you diversifying into different industries too? Yeah, um, we're, we're doing a hell of a lot of work now with aerospace and aerospace is where we're trying to drive 50% of our business. So at the moment, we're probably 70-30 uh, split um, between um, Formula One and aerospace. I'd like that to be 50-50, but not at the expense of Formula One. I just want to 
get more capacity in, which will allow me to engage with more aerospace customers, which we are doing.